So here I am on the 36th floor of the Taipei 101. It's one of the, the largest buildings in the world. It's definitely one of the most impressive buildings in the world. And that's where Gigabyte is always showing off their latest and greatest creations. Center stage, servers. Lots of interesting servers and builds and SKUs. But maybe Intel or AMD is not really your cup of tea. What about ARM? Cavium. Cavium Thunder X2. We got so many requests and so many people on the forum and messaging me on Twitter and everywhere that's like, hey, I think this is a thing. I've seen some Cavium servers that have, you know, 100 gig Ethernet or 25 gig Ethernet, and I'm really sort of curious about those being a server and all this kind of thing. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, we got to roll that sponsor spot. Travel expenses for Computex 2018 paid for in part by Fractal Design. Yeah, if you haven't seen our coverage of the Fractal Define R6, you should got to check out our videos on the Define R6. We've done a Threadripper build, we've done an i9 build. It's cool, it's quiet, it's competent, it's a really awesome case, and you should check out our videos on that. Travel expenses for Computex also paid in part by ASRock. Yes, ASRock, the many PCs and graphics cards, and ASRock's just building everything these days. Whether you swing Team Red or Team Blue, ASRock has got something for you, I think. So be sure to check out our coverage of all of their motherboards, everything from IOMMU groups to full UEFI tours, which I know only the people that are basically getting ready to pull the trigger look at those UEFIs. Everybody else doesn't care. So big thanks to ASRock for sponsoring us and you really should check out our other coverage of, of ASRock products and our coverage from Computex 2018. So check this out. This is the H261 T60. This is a 2U 4 node Cavium Thunder X2 system. Yeah. Each node has two Thunder X2 processors, 56 PCI Express lane. You know, it's up to 32 cores per CPU, but in a dual socket configuration, it's only 30 cores because they use the cores for communication and things like that. There are four nodes in a single 2U chassis using only 2200 watts of power. So it's got a redundant 2200 watt PSU. That is an insane amount of horsepower for a setup like this. Now in terms of connectivity, you've got PCI Express as well as proprietary mezzanine add-in cards for communication or whatever that you want to do. 56 lanes per node is available for you know peripherals and interface and, and all this other kind of stuff that you might be running. Each node can be managed individually just as if it were a completely independent system, but the chassis features a centralized IPMI management interface. In this configuration, you know, we've got uh, four channel of, you know, registered DIMMs, DDR4, 2666, 2400, it's up to 64 DIMMs. You've got eight SFP28 interfaces. It's got 12 three and a half inch SAS SATA bays. It's got eight low, pro uh, eight low profile PCI Express Gen 3 interfaces, four OCP Gen 3 mezzanine slots, the, uh, you know, IPMI controllers, the A-Speed AST2500. Maybe a four node setup is not your cup of tea. You're not ready for something that is that dense or you want a, you know, a little bit more expandability or IO or peripheral interface or something. So check out the R181T90. This is two Cavium Thunder X2 ARM processors, eight channels up to 24 DIMMs. It's got one 10 gig SFP plus connection, one 25 gig SFP 28 connection by default. And of course, you know there are mezzanine add-in cards as well as PCI Express add-in cards. So you can add whatever. It's got two OCP mezzanine slots. That's PCI Express 3.0 by 16. It has 12 two and a half inch hot swap bays, the same A speed AST2500, and a single uh, 1600 watt uh, power supply. Well, it's a one plus one power supply, so you get the redundant power supply interface. And as you can see, you know, in terms of IO and interface, there's ample power distribution. We get the eight pin, you know, power and the power for the PCI Express interface. And of course, you know, you get your 12 two and a half inch hot swap hard drive bays. Now all of this is in a single 1U chassis. Maybe you don't need something that dense. Well, so the 2U is the R281T91, and either one of these would probably be the machine to start with if you're looking to experiment with Thunder X2 and your particular workload. 60 cores, we've got the 1 plus 1 1600 watt power supply configuration. We get a few more drive bays at the back. There are a few more two and a half inch, that could be for your boot or your OS drive or whatever. And of course we've got more regular PCI Express connectivity in addition to our, you know, mezzanine slots. You can have up to eight PCI Express 3.0 expansion slots crammed in here, but in this configuration we've got, you know, the four PCI Express by eight connections on, the, on our riser cards. There's also the half height 
expansion slots on the other side, you know, in the two and a half inch bays. This configuration also 110 gig SFP plus, 125 gig SFP 28 connection, eight channel, you know, ECC DIMMs, 24 DIMMs, and of course our two Cavian processors. Now, maybe GPU computation is more your style because again, specialization, like I was saying. Well, this is the G291 281. So this is up to eight double slot GPU cards supported in this 2U chassis. It's NVIDIA validated, so NVIDIA has tested this platform with Tesla GPUs. Uh, it is available in both the Xeon and Epic configuration, so I'm going to talk to you about Xeon first and then we'll switch over to Epic. Six channel DIMM support, it's got two 10 gig interfaces built in, one dedicated management port, eight two and a half inch hot swap, you know, hard drive SSD base. It has eight PCI Express 3.0 Gen 3 expansion slots for GPUs and two uh, PCI Express by 16 half length low profile slots for uh, add-in cards or anything else that you might run. So the A-Speed ASD2500 and dual 2000 watt power supplies because you know, if you're going to be running Tesla or machine learning, or you could use this for, for VDI, I mean, that's there's, there's nothing that stops you really. So this chassis gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of those types of workloads that you might want to run. And you can see what special engineering they had to do in order to support power delivery for up to eight GPUs. So maybe Xeon's not the way that you want to swing. Well, good news, there's an Epic version of that, but check it out, it's only a single socket instead of dual socket because, hey, Epic is sort of nuts. This is the G291Z20. The G291Z20 is pretty much the same thing, a slightly different PCI Express layout, but a lot of the same features on the chassis, the same cooling layout, the same PCI Express layout, you know, PCI Express by 18, but again, all powered by a single Epic CPU. One other thing to note about this chassis is that it's got two internal M.2 connections complete with temperature sensors, like direct contact temperature sensors for your internal M.2 devices. So it's a little different motherboard layout, a little bit different connectivity, definitely some different options, but, but definitely a nice chassis for GPU bound workloads, depending on whatever you're, you're running for that. Now, one of the consequences of the, you know, core race and Intel sort of cannibalizing their server parts. I mean, we saw that with the 28 core. They basically cannibalized one of their server parts and overclocked it to five gigahertz. We're like, whoa, new desktop chip, yeah. That's market segmentation from Intel. Well, this, this is the R161 R12. This is a rack mount server, a 1U server with a 1U radiator designed for the Core X series processor. Things like the 7980XE, but I mean, you could run you could run any i9, you could run any really X299 CPU in here. It's four channels, non-ECC memory support, it has two one gig LAN ports, that's the i350 AM2, which is supported by Windows Server 2012, which is a little different than what you find on some other boards, because some other boards are like, well, we've got an Intel NIC, but this has two PCI Express 3.0 by, uh, by 16 expansion slots as well, and so that's gonna depend a little bit on the CPU that you're using, you know, as to how those LAN are distributed and if you have those lanes available but it also has an a-speed ast 2500 remote management controller if your workload that you're running is not mission critical you would be hard pressed to beat the value here it also has a redundant 1100 watt 80 plus platinum power supply it also has two nvme two and a half inch bays at the at the front so if you want to run optane or any other you know two and a half inch nvme you totally can and then there's four sata slash sas two and a half inch bays at the front as well you know what the really exciting thing about that server chassis is? It supports overclocking. Even, I mean, because it's 79 ADXE, I mean, of course it will, but there were people that were going to ask, so I just thought I'd tell you. So what do we have here? Mm, this is the MZ01-CE0. What an odd, they've got to work on their naming. This is an AMD Epic 7000 series motherboard. This is not a Threadripper motherboard. This is designed for Epic, so it's eight channel memory. That's two 10 gigabit interfaces plus two gigabit interfaces. It also has a dedicated management port, so IPMI right here. That's four slim SAS connections for up to 16 SATA 3 interfaces. It also has uh, M.2 with a temperature sensor that's gonna make direct contact. And it has five PCI Express 3.0 by 16 slots. And so you can run up to four double slot GPU cards here. And that management controller is an AST2500. Now, if you don't want to DIY a system around that motherboard, Gigabyte is starting to sell Epic workstations. And I mean Epic, Epic workstations. Workstations that have built-in hot swap storage and, you know, that are designed for Epic CPUs. 
So we can see a, a chassis here. Now this is a sort of a late stage prototype. There's a couple changes that are coming, but this is in mass production right now. So probably by the time you're watching this or not long after this, this is gonna be available. This is outfitted with a Radeon Instinct MI25 um, and the, the hot spot thing there at the front. And then you've got your Epic CPU. Man, what a view. That's about it for the Gigabyte Suite. It's time to go on to the next one. So this is the brains of this. Two teraflops. This is what Jensen Huang has been talking about from NVIDIA. These are TensorFlow processing units that pretty much only has applications in machine learning and artificial intelligence, but you can use it for some other scientific workloads. I can't believe that I'm looking at two petaflops in a box. This is completely insane that this thing can do two petaflops. They're working on putting this in a 10U to, you know, uh, server so that you can see this. This is the HGX2. It's uh, 16 GPUs and $400,000 US. This is super micro, this is completely nuts. Oh, the servers at Computex are always so exciting. I always love getting into these. There really aren't many other applications other than machine learning that need such tight performance and such tightly interconnected nodes where it's like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a full rack of these, uh, you know, these 10U machines doing all of this processing and $400,000 for two petaflops. I mean, that's a steal. Well, maybe, uh, maybe if you think that's pricey, you should check this out. This is the, uh, the Intel ruler form factor, you know. So this is the future of storage servers. This 1U server can hold up to one petabyte. And how? What's well, the Intel ruler form factor? This, this one Intel ruler form factor can hold up to 32 terabytes of flash. And that's a PCI Express by four connection, so one ruler to rule them all and in darkness bind them <laughs> well no that's 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 lord of the rings so uh, that's probably not right but uh, you know intel could do optane or traditional flash or, or anything here but this is the new ruler form factor that you may have seen in the news or anything like that and this whole thing potentially is just flash memory there's also a new terminology here it's called jbuff just a bunch of flash and that's all this box really is. It's meant to be the head end for caching or flash or something like that. Not to be outdone by Intel, but Supermicro and Samsung have a similar competing form factor. This is called NF1. And so NF1 is a similar form factor to the ruler form factor. And you can see it's got the cover pulled off so you can sort of visualize how things are in terms of PCB layout. Basically it's wide enough so that you could have two high density flash memory chips side by side and there's more room for a controller. And now Samsung is not quite up to the, in the density that Intel is promising here, but it is 576 uh, terabytes up to in this one U configuration. That's up to three terabytes of ECC memory, DDR4, 2666, and 24 DIMM slots. It has two PCI Express 3.0 by 16 slots and one PCI Express 3.0 by four. 32 hot swap bays so one of those are well four of these are hybrid so you could run SATA m.2 drives for booting so if those are a little too rich for your blood because you're not google or facebook then uh maybe something like this is is more along the lines of what you're looking for this is 24 drives of nvme so pci express connectivity right at the front two and a half inch drives in a more normal ish chassis this is the Supermicro 2U AS2113S. And so as you can see, this has got, you know, PCI Express 3.0 by eight, PCI Express 3.0 by four, PCI Express 3.0 by 16, and a single Epic CPU that's driving all that, because, because of course. So at the back, we've got our two, you know, two additional two and a half inch bays. That's for your, like your boot drive, your OS, it'd be SAS or SATA or whatever. But at the front, it's all business. It's all NVMe. Now, Supermicro also has a four node 2U systems. So each node can have up to two Epic CPUs. That makes it Epic cubed, because you could have eight CPUs in a 2U rack configuration. So that's tons of memory connectivity. We've got M.2, two regular PCI Express 3.0 expansion slots, one by 16, one by 25. It's also got a, a, a its own proprietary mezzanine interface. As it's configured, it's got two 25 gig and two one gig interfaces here as we see it. So that's the SFP28. 
Each node has its own IPMI controller, which is of course a speed. Uh, and so they can be controlled independently, but you know, with those 25 gig connections, you could connect your machines together and run a cluster and, and manage that in software. Now, if you don't need that kind of data density, you can still get some really powerful systems in a 1U configuration. So check out this 1U system. This is the AS1113, which is very similar to the 2U um, system that we saw based on the same motherboard, in fact. You've got more PCI Express slots, more PCI Express expansion slot options. Instead of the you know mezzanine card, which is often something that you see when space is at a premium, this is a single socket Epic system. But you've got you know the eight channel memory configuration with up to two sticks of memory per channel, and you've got your twelve you know NVMe slots at the front. Now they do have another system. This is the SYS 1029 that is designed for NVMe storage, but is not like super super dense. But this is based on NVMe storage that's going to have a maximum height of seven millimeters so this is a system that's based on dual socket p so that's lga 3647 so it's designed for intel xeon scalable processors this will support up to three terabytes of ecc memory it's, you know registered dims or unregistered ecc dims it's 24 ddr4 2666 it has two 25 gig sfp28 interfaces and 20 hot swap two and a half inch bays it also has one internal m.2 nvme port and you've got an optional extra nvme and sata let's get a 1600 watt redundant to power supply now the really exciting thing about this is since epic we're seeing a consolidation we've got 40 gig ethernet and i mentioned before it's like oh my gosh 40 gig ethernet is obsolete you need to upgrade to 100 gig ethernet but the really exciting thing about all the connectivity and scalability for these chassis are that we're seeing new switches and new technologies. So we've got the SFP28 for 25 gig, and the way these things scale out now is if you've got your, you know, you've got your 10 gig interfaces or your multiple 10 gig interfaces, and those will go, you know, 10 to one from your 10 gig interfaces to your 100 gig interfaces. But we've also got 25 gig, so you can run, you know, four 25 gig interfaces through a 100 gig interface. And they have these breakout cables, Supermicro has these breakout cables, so that you can run, you know, four 25 gig servers into a single 100 gig port. And then you've got these, you know, the four link lights showing you how that works. Because, uh, you know, speaking as somebody who's worked on 40 and 100 gig ethernet, and even like old school 10 gig ethernet, it was a bear to get it to work correctly. And now it's all basically just plug and play. And a, a lot of the weird behavior has gone away, although not all of it. I don't always party, but when I do, Frackle is paying me to party. Stay thirsty, my friends.